<sighs> you know something? It's hot. You think they'd air condition the place? I almost dropped dead in court. I never knew they locked the door. Sure they locked the door. What did you think? I don't know. It just never occurred to me. Six days. I should have finished it in two. Talk, talk, talk. You ever hear so much talk about nothing? Well, <laughs> I guess they're entitled. Everybody gets a fair trial. That's the system. Suppose you can't say anything against it. How'd you like that business about the knife? Did you ever hear a phonier story? <laughs> well, look. You gotta expect that. You know what you're dealing with. Yeah, I suppose. What's the matter? You got a cold? Ah, oh, Lulu. Hot with a cold. <sighs> they kill you. Alright, gentlemen. Uh, let's take our seats. Right. It's gonna be fast. I've got tickets to the seven year itch tonight. I must be the only guy in the whole world who hasn't seen it yet. <laughs> okay, Your Honor. Start the show. How about sitting down? The gentleman at the window. How about sitting down? Oh, I'm sorry. It's tough to figure, isn't it? A kid kills his father. Bang! Just like that. Well, it's the elements. They let their kids run wild. Maybe it serves them right. Is everybody here? The old man's inside. We'd like to get started. Oh, forgive me, gentlemen. I didn't mean to keep you waiting. That's all right. Fine to see. All right. Uh, now you gentlemen can handle this any way that you like. I mean, I'm not going to make any rules here. Um, if we want to discuss it first and then vote, well, that's one way. Um, uh, we can vote right now and see where we stand. Let's vote now. Who knows? Maybe we can all go home. Yeah, let's let's see who's where. All right, let's vote now. Anybody doesn't want to vote? Okay. All those voting guilty, please raise their hands. Ten, eleven, okay. That's eleven for guilty. Okay. Um, not guilty. One. Right. Okay. Eleven to one. Guilty. Uh, now we know where we stand. Somebody's in left field. Think he's not guilty? I don't know. I never saw a guilty a man in my life. Sat right in court and heard the same thing I did. The man's a dangerous killer. You can see it. He's 19 years old. That's old enough. Knapped his own father four inches into the chest. Innocent 19 year old kid. They proved it, proved it a dozen different ways. You want me to list them? No. Well, do you believe his story? I don't know if I believe it. Maybe I do. So what did you vote not guilty for? There were 11 votes for guilty. It's not so easy for me to raise my hand and send a boy off to die without talking about it first. Who says it's easy for me? No one. What, just because I voted fast? I think the guy is guilty. You couldn't change my mind if you talked for a hundred years. I don't want to change your mind. I just want to talk for a while. Look, this boy has been kicked around all his life, you know? Like, living in a slum, his mother dead since he was nine, that's not a very good head start. He's a tough, angry kid. You know why slum kids get that way? Because we knock him on the head once a day, every day. I think maybe we owe him a few words, that's all. I don't mind telling you this, mister. We don't owe him a thing. He's got, he got a fair trial, didn't he? You know what a trial costs? He's lucky he got it. Look, we're all grown-ups here. You're not going to tell us what, that we're supposed to believe him, knowing where he's come from. I've lived my entire life among them all. You can't believe a word they say. You know that. I don't know that. What a terrible thing for a man to believe. Since when is dishonesty a group characteristic? You don't have a monopoly on the truth. Alright, it's not Sunday. We don't need a sermon. What this man is saying is dangerous. I don't see any need for arguing like this. I think we ought to be able to behave like gentlemen. Right! If we're going to discuss this case, let's discuss the facts. I think that's a good point. Uh, we have a job to do, let's do it. I may have an idea here. I'm thinking out loud now, but it seems to me that it's up to us to convince this gentleman here that we're right and he's wrong. Maybe if we for a minute or two try to emphasize. 
That sounds fair enough. Uh, supposing we uh, go around once around the table. Okay, let's start it off. Right. Um, I guess you're first. Oh, well, I just think he's guilty. I thought it was obvious. I mean, nobody proved otherwise. Nobody has to prove otherwise. The burden of proof is on the prosecution. The defendant doesn't have to open his mouth. That's in the Constitution, the Fifth Amendment. You've heard of it. Uh, well, yeah, of course I've heard of it. I, I mean, well, I know what it is. I, what I mean is... Well, Ava, anyway, I just I think he's guilty. Okay, let's get to the facts. Number one. Talk about the old man who lived on the second floor, right beneath the room where the murder took place. At ten minutes after twelve on the night of the murder, he heard loud noises coming from the upstairs apartment. Said it sounded like a fight. Then he heard the kid say to the father, I'm going to kill you. And he hears a body falling to the floor. He runs to the door of his apartment, looks out, sees the kid running down the stairs and out of the house. He calls the police. They find the father with a knife in his chest. Yeah, and the uh, coroner fixed the time of death um, at around uh, midnight. Right. What else do you want? The boy's entire story is flimsy. He claimed he was at the movies. That's a little ridiculous, isn't it? He doesn't even remember what pictures he saw. That's right. You're absolutely right. Look, what about the woman across the street? If her tes testimony doesn't prove it, then nothing does. That's right. She saw the killing, didn't she? Let's go in order. No, just, just, just a minute. Here's a woman who's lying in bed and can't sleep. It's hot, you know? Anyway, she looks out the window and right across the street, she sees the kid stick the knife into his father. She knows the kid's all her his life. His window is right opposite hers, across the L tracks, and she swore she saw him do it. Through the window of a passing elevated train. Okay, and they proved in court that you can look through the windows and of a passing L train at night and see what's happening on the other side. They proved it. I'd like to ask you something. How come you believed her? And she's one of them too, isn't she? Well, aren't you a smart fella then? Yeah. Now take it easy. Come on, sit down. Don't you let him get you all upset for? Let's all calm down. It's your turn. I'll pass it. That's your privilege. How about you? I don't know. Um, I started to be convinced when I heard about the uh, the argument. You know, the, the people across the hall heard the argument at 7 o'clock, didn't they say? I, I don't know. I, I could be wrong. I think it was 8 o'clock, not 7. That's right, 8 o'clock. They heard the father hit the boy twice, and then they saw the boy walk angrily out of the house. So what does that prove? doesn't prove anything, I, I guess. It's just part of the picture. I mean, I, I didn't say it proved anything. Anything else? Uh, no. Alright. How about you? I don't know, most of it's been said already. We can talk all day about this thing, but I think we're wasting our time. Look at the kid's record. At 15, he was in reform school. He stole a car. He's been arrested for mugging. He was picked up for knife fighting. I think they said he stabbed somebody in the arm. This is a very fine boy. Well, ever since he was five years old, his father beat him up regularly. He used his fist. So did I, kid like that. You're right. It's the kids, you know. They don't listen. I've got a kid. When he was eight years old, he ran away from a fight. I saw the whole thing. I was so ashamed. I told him that right. I'm gonna make a man out of you or I'm gonna bust you into little pieces trying. When he was 15, he hit me in the face. Big, you know. I haven't seen him in three years. Rotten kid. You work your heart out. Alright, let's get on with it. We're missing the point here. This boy, the product of a filthy neighborhood, and a uh, broken heart. We can't help that. Um, we're not here we're not here to go into the reasons why slums are breeding grounds for criminals. They are. I know it, you know it. The children who come out of slum backgrounds are potential menaces to society. You said it there. I, I don't want anything to do with them, believe me. 
I lived in a slum all my oh, life. Oh, no, wait a second. I, I, I used to play in my backyard, filled with garbage. Maybe it still smells on me. Now, let's be reasonable. There's nothing personal. There is something personal. Come on, fella. I didn't mean you. Let's not be so sensitive. Now, uh, let's stop the bickering. Uh, we're wasting time. It's your turn. All right. I had a peculiar feeling about this trial. Somehow, I felt that the defense counsel never really conducted a thorough cross-examination. I mean, he was appointed by the court to defend the boy. Well, he hardly seemed interested. Too many questions were left unasked. What about the ones that were asked? For instance, let's talk about that cute little switch knife. You know, the one that fine upright kid admitted by him? All right. Let's talk about it. Let's get it in here and look at it. I'd like to see it again, Mr. Foreman. We all know what it looks like. I don't see why we have to see it again. What do you think? The gentleman has a right to see exhibits and evidence. Okay with me. This knife is a pretty strong piece of evidence, don't you agree? I do. The boy admits going out of his house at 8 o'clock after being slapped by his father. Or punched. Or punched. He went to the neighborhood store and he bought a switch knife. The storekeeper was arrested the following day when he admitted selling it to the boy. It's a very unusual knife. The storekeeper identified it and said it was the only one of its kind he had in stock. Why did the boy get it? As a gift for a friend, he says. Am I right so far? You bet he's right. Now listen to this guy. He knows what he's talking about. Next. The boy claims that on the way home the knife must have fallen through a hole in his coat pocket, and he never saw it again. Now there's a story, gentlemen. You know exactly what actually happened. The boy took the knife home and a few hours later stabbed his father with it, and never even remembered to wipe off the fingerprints. Everyone connected to this case identified this knife. Now, are you trying to tell me that someone picked it up off the street and went to the boy's house and stabbed his father with it just to be amusing? No, I'm saying that it's possible that the boy lost the knife and that someone else stabbed his father with a similar knife. It's possible. Take a look at this knife. It's a very strange knife. I've never seen one before like it in my life. Neither has the shopkeeper who sold it to him. Aren't you trying to make us accept a pretty incredible coincidence? I'm not trying to make anyone accept it. I'm just saying it's possible. No, I'm saying it's not possible. Hey, what are you trying to do? Yeah, what is this? Who do you think you are? Look at it. It's the same night. Quiet. Let's be quiet. Where did you get it? I got a little junk shop around the corner from the boy's house. Cost two dollars. Now listen to me. You pulled a real smart trick, but you proved absolutely zero. Maybe there are ten knives like that. So what? Maybe there are. The boy lied and you know it. He may have lied. Do you think he lied? No, that's a stupid question. Of course he lied. Do you? You don't have to ask me that. You know my answer. He lied. Do you think he lied? I... I don't know. Now wait a second. What are you, the guy's lawyer? Listen, there are still 11 of us who think he's guilty. You're alone. What do you think you're going to accomplish? If you want to be stubborn and hang this jury, he'll be tried again and found guilty, sure as he's born. You're probably right. So what are you going to do about it? We can be here all night. It's certainly one night. A man may die. And whose fault is that? Do you think maybe we, we went over it again? Like, what Did anyone force him to kill his father? How do you like him? I mean, like someone forced him! Perhaps this is not the point. <sighs> no one forced anyone to... Look, gentlemen, we can spitball all night here. I can't understand a word in here. Why do we all have to talk at once? He's right. Um, I think we ought to get on with it. Well, what do you say? You're the one holding up the show. I've got a proposition to make. I want to call for a vote. I want you, 11 men, to vote by secret ballot. I'll abstain. If there are still 11 votes for guilty, I won't stand alone. We'll take in a guilty verdict right now. Okay, let's do it. That sounds fair. Does everyone agree? All right.
Pesti's along. <laughs>